What's up guys, in this video I'm gonna break down what do you do in those situations when a girl just stops texting you back? How do you re-engage the conversation, get it going again without coming off as needy? So in those frustrating situations where you're texting a girl you like, you feel that the conversation is going well, and then she just randomly stops responding, there's essentially four tools at your disposal that have worked pretty well for me in the past. The first is gonna to be to simply reopen her. So I might say something like, yo sexy, or hola linda, or send her the infamous Ryan Gosling meme. Basically, I'm just restarting the conversation. And I'll typically take this approach if it's in the early stages of the interaction, or I just feel that the reason she's not responding is something more but not. Like I just made a random statement and she didn't respond to this. I'm not gonna take this approach if I'm really trying to make plans and I feel that she's purposely not responding to me. Second is going to be simply build on what I said earlier. So for example, uh, you know, I'm trying to make plans, I might say something like pick a night. And then if a girl doesn't respond in a day or two, I might say don't think too hard now. So I'm basically building on what I said earlier and this just gives her a very gentle, you know, non-needy push. It's like, hey, you forgot to answer me, you know, kind of kindly respond woman, you know, just kind of like a gentle nudge. It's not needy. And it'll be pretty effective as long as there's not a strong underlying reason for why she's ignoring you. Like, for example, you know, she thinks you're only into one night stands or, you know, she's nervous or she just didn't like something that you said, you know, particularly something along the lines of that. As long as there's not a strong underlying reason, this is a pretty effective approach to just kind of give her a gentle nudge and get the conversation, you know, going and get her to answer your question. The third is going to be a takeaway. So this might be something like, if that's cool, or if you're too nervous, I'd understand, or if you're into that sort of thing, or don't be shy. Basically, I made a push, and then she hasn't responded to it, so now I'm pulling it back, right? I'm not gonna make another push. This is a mistake guys will typically make. They'll push, push, and push. You know, typically made a push and didn't work, now I'm gonna pull back, I'm gonna take it away from her. And of course, this triggers the fear of loss that most people have, and it will typically get the girl to, you know, explain what her concern is, or why she didn't respond, or what exactly is going on in her mind. So for example, you know, I sent her a racy text message, like something sexual, she didn't respond to it. I might say, if you're into that sort of thing a few days from now. And then she might say, oh, hey, sorry, I just, you know, I just fell asleep. Or she might say, yeah, sorry, I didn't really, you know, like, I don't really like to be, you know, bent over and choked or something like that, you know, whatever the fuck is relevant to my earlier message. And fourth is going to be a call out. So this is going to be my last resort. I've tried everything else. I've done takeaways and you know, I've tried to be persistent. She's just not responding to it. I'm going to directly call out her behavior, but I'm going to do it in a non-needy, non-butthurt way. So for example, if you know, I'm trying to make plans with her and she's just you know, being very difficult, I might say, look, if you're not into this, just let me know and I can stop trying. Or for example, if she keeps using the excuse, no, I just don't have time. You know, oh, I'm busy today. I'm busy tomorrow. I might say, look, I'm busy too but we can both find a few hours for our love if we actually wanted to. Or, you know, simply I might say, are you always this difficult to make plans with? Basically, I'm directly calling out her behavior, but I'm not being aggressive or, you know, needy about it. And again, I recommend saving this for last because if you use it too early on, it's just gonna come out like too aggressive, like, whoa, where's this guy coming from? Like I was gonna text him back, or whoa, I just fell asleep and now this guy's getting all butthurt. So you wanna use a, you know, a call out when there's actually a clear reason, you know, there's a pattern that's emerging, like she's, you can tell that she's purposely not responding to you. That's when it's time for takeaways and call outs. All right, next to help you get this point across, I'm gonna run you guys through a layer port of mine where I actually had to use all four of these approaches in one interaction. This was a chick I met uh, night gaming. We had a nice 10 minute conversation at a bar, got her number, and then I texted her that night, and this is where the conversation begins. So, you know, as always with cold approach numbers, I just typically send her my name and you know, see how she responds to that. So I say, Alex, and we both spoke Russian, so she uh, referred, She said, hey, Sashulia, which is like a Russian nickname for Alex. So that's the, uh, the context. And then I respond in Russian, I like your WhatsApp pic, because she had like really cute pic of her wearing glasses and her tits out, so pretty sexy. And she says, uh, thank you for the compliment. So I say, programmer by day, porn star by night. So I was referring to her job. And she says, wait, what? Did I put the naked photo as my WhatsApp pic again? So I like this girl, she has a good sense of humor. You know, we got a good banter going. So, so far, so good. So I say, yes, can't be putting all those thoughts in my head like that. So again, you know, I'm like, now I'm sexually, you know, leading things forward in a smooth, calibrated way. The stuff I talk about in other videos. And she says, I may have to rethink my pick choice. My family communicates with me on here. Okay, so then this is where, you know, 
it begins. So I say, well, we can review options over that bottle of wine. So typically I would be a little bit more, you know, uh, more smooth in my soft close attempt. But when I met her, we had actually, you know, made plans to grab a split bottle of wine together. So again, I was just kind of referencing to that. And then she doesn't respond to it. So I wait a day and I sent her a picture of me holding a bottle of wine. So here I'm using approach number two, where I'm basically building on what I said earlier. And then she says, looks like you already finished it uh, because the bottle was like two thirds empty. I say, don't worry, there's plenty more. She says, lack of alcohol is the least of my worries. I say, it's okay, I'll give you a big hug and your, all your worries will disappear. So you got a cool, good, flirty vibe, you know, some banter going back and forth. Um, you know, so the, I re-engage the conversation and then she sends me a, uh, a whatever, weird emoji and she says, well, a good wine usually does that trick. And then I say, they pair together perfectly, red or white. So I'm, you know, I'm getting towards the clothes, I'm building it up. She says, depending, white is for sipping and red is more involved. So then I say, how about, we're sipping with a handsome guy from Belarus. That's actually where I'm originally from. And she says, how nice, do you know Vaughn? So it's like a playful shit test. I say, yes, he's quite the catch. And she says, uh, well, hopefully no catching of anything. So I like her, you know, she's being really flirty. She has a good sense of humor. So I say, well, nope, only a good tot. And then she doesn't respond back. So I wait two days and here I do a little bit of a takeaway. So I say, if you're into that sort of thing, right? So kind of said only a good time. It's a pretty sexual inference and now I'm taking it away. And then she says, good time, who isn't? Which is the other response I kind of expected. I say, just making sure we should split a bottle of wine sometime soon then. So here I go for another soft close. She says, split, question mark, LOL. So she's just kind of playfully teasing me. I say, yes, as in drink together. And obviously she says, I'm kidding, what's going to say, I can do my own bottle. So I say, damn girl, you gangster. And again, she does not respond. So I wait two days and I say, uh, in Russian, what are your plans for the evening? So here I'm doing approach number one, you know, I'm alternating back and forth, but I'm basically just restarting the conversation. Again, this is, I'm just re-engaging it. She says, hey, already booked for tonight. So then I say, all right, I'm gonna book you for tomorrow night though. She says, lol, so personal question for you. Why a propensity to hang out with a much older woman? Why not play with girls your own age? So she was like in her, I think, mid 40s, but she was a fucking smoking hot MILF, so totally worth it for me. So here, you know, the age objection, this is common. And you know, my favorite way to answer this is with what I said next. I say, age is just a number. I've dated a woman from early 20s to late 40s. It always came down to the person, not the year on their driver's license. One big plus I found with older women is a higher sex drive and better communication, which matches with me. So I've been using this response whenever I get the age, uh, you know, age concern or objection. And basically I like this because it addresses the concern you know, this is the reason why I like older women. And then it also directs that, the question, to a more positive thing, like I'm qualifying her. Yeah, you guys have a higher sex drive. And it's a general statement that most women will agree with, like, yeah, well, you know, I do have a really high sex drive, haha, -ha, how did you know, or something like that. But she does not respond. So I wait a few more days, and then I say, am I wrong? So this is a takeaway. So I made a statement, now I'm taking it away. And she says, hi, I'm sorry, I'm in conference all day today, I will touch base later. I just say, okay, because you know, I don't want to push too hard. And then she, um, again, this is, the, this is a good thing about waiting. Whenever you're going to re-engage the conversation or use any one of these approaches, you always want to wait a day or two because I thought that she wasn't going to say anything to okay. But the next day she responds, hi there, my apologies. My professional life keeps me incredibly busy and keeps adding. We'll meet up with that glass of wine at some point. So here, you know, I try to make plans. I say, I understand what's your schedule like. And she just sends me one of these and says, just to put in perspective for you, I'm just leaving the office. So I say, busy woman, got to take some time to relax. She says, indeed I do. I say, I'll get the wine and massage oil ready. She says, well, let's start with the wine. So again, good banter. So then I say, sounds good. When should I pencil you in for? So again, trying to make plans. And then she says, lol, you are learning. And then it's like a little bit of a condescending message. So I actually decide not to respond to her and see if she'll double text me. My plan was to message her the next day, but then she just winds up forwarding me a you know a funny video. So then I just kind of build on that. So I say, lol, well, it almost, it's been almost a week since I had my last drink. She says, sounds like you need intervention. I say, save me. She says, lol, you need to be saved. So a funny thing about this girl, she just kind of likes to like, playfully give me shit, which is fine. You know, I have no problem with that. I say, I'm beyond saving, but let's grab a drink anyway. So another soft close attempt. And she says, lol, that's a spirit. So 
I just think you're starting to notice a pattern here. There's a pretty clear pattern that she's responsive, she's flirty, she's investing, but whenever I try to make plans, actually you know, get the meetup, she always just kind of derails the conversation and gives me a roundabout answer. So then I say, yes, now we just need to pick a night and then she just gives me one of these, right? Again, so she's kind of like, she's not directly ignoring me, but she's kind of like, I'm trying to push, move the conversation forward and she just keeps moving it sideways. So there's a clear pattern that's emerging here. So then my next approach is voice memos. So I send her a voice memo, she sends me one back, I send her another one, and again, she doesn't respond to it. So I wait a few days and then I take approach number one and you know I just restart the conversation. So I say working hard or hardly working. She says, still at work, I see you changed your photo. And she's, I say, ah, you notice? And she says, I think that was the point. And then I say, I could tell you needed a distraction. And then she says, and you did it only for me. Ah, optimistic thinking. So then I say, of course, even God, the best wine for us. And she says, the best, wow, I'm impressed. Opus Chateau or Les Child? I don't really know shit about wine that much, so I don't, I just say, let's not ruin all the surprise now. And she says, yes, let's not. And I actually was leaving town, so I wanted to just keep it going. So I say, I'm flying to New Jersey today, but we're getting together after I get back. So basically what I'm doing with this message is, I'm actually making it seem like I'm the one that can't hang out with her. Like, oh, even though she didn't ask me to hang out, I'm like, oh, well, I can't hang out because I'm going to New Jersey today, but we'll hang out when I get back, you know? It's another, you know, little technique that can work sometimes. She says, say, flight is that a fact I say definitely and she says yes sir and then uh, she's what's in Jersey a little family get-together nice enjoy thanks so yeah so you can see that this is a girl that's worth putting energy into because you know she's fun she's hot and she's actually investing in the conversation you know she's not just giving me one word answers if that was the situation I would have stopped responding a long time ago so I see some potential here right it just at this point I really need to use you know all my fucking text game skills to get the meetup so then when I get back I say guess where I am so this is approach uh, number one I'm just restarting the conversation again she says not my apartment I hope lol I say, I flip it around at her. I say, you wish, but no, I'm back in Miami. She says, do I now? I say, you tell me. So there's a lot of you see like verbal, you know, frame juggling, like we're just both trying to like control the frame. Uh, it's kind of funny if you look at it from an outside perspective. And she says, well, it seems like you have made a concrete statement. Lol, welcome back. Then I say, thanks, but real welcome should be done in person, maybe with some wine. Again, soft closing again, you know, it's like the fifth or sixth time. She says, indeed you should. And then I say, pick a night. And then again, she doesn't respond. So I wait two days and I use the, you know, the example I referenced earlier where I build on what I said earlier and say, don't think too hard. She sends me a voice memo. I send her a voice memo back, but she says, haha, cute. I say, I'll make you a deal such as, let's meet for a drink sometime this week. You bring the cute nerd glasses. I'll make it 400%. So I'm referencing to something that she said in the voice memo. She says, lol, you want just the glasses? Again, she's playfully teasing me. I say, nah, you're part of the package. She sends me that emoji that she loves. I say, deal. Question mark, she says, you got it. And then I say, perfect, what evening works best? And she doesn't respond again. So this is a clear pattern here, you know, I've tried numerous times and it's been already several days. So then I do a call out. I say, look, I get it, I'm busy too, but I know we can both find a little time if we actually wanted to. And it works pretty well because she sends me a very detailed response explaining her schedule. And then, you know, there's still another few weeks of text games, but ultimately I do wind up getting the meetup. We hook up, you know, the sex was actually pretty epic. If you're interested in seeing the rest of the screenshots, I'm gonna link it in the forums. You know, I wrote about this whole LR with all the screenshots from start to finish. And that kind of wraps it up. Now, I do wanna reiterate that not one of these approaches will be effective if you're being needy and you don't wait a day or two between sending the message. That is key. You don't wanna be like fucking doing call outs if it's only been 30 minutes since the last message because the girl likely would be so like, whoa, bro, I was actually gonna text you back. So you gotta be patient, gotta give it a day or two before you reinitiate the conversation because more often than not, the girl will actually respond if you had just waited. Hopefully you guys found this video valuable. Show us some love by smashing that like button, hitting the subscribe button, and clicking the bell for notifications. And also if you haven't already, check out our very detailed ultimate introductory guide to getting laid on Tinder. We wrote this giant ebook and it's 100% free. I will link it in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and until next time.